Okay, so we are the Newton family. I am Greg, this is my wife Bridget. These are our kids, Ellie, Ava. Ayla, and Will. And Will, <laughs> and William. His story is, is very similar to that of, of many other Dravet family, families. You know, it starts with that first seizure. The day after Christmas, um, his first Christmas, we noticed something was wrong, but we really didn't know what was happening. He was having his first seizure, rushed to the hospital, still seizing the entire way. Yeah. Seizing in the hospital and and still Over just an couldn't f like understand why this was happening and, and what was happening. And, and we were told eventually after a long hospital stay that it was probably a complex febrile seizure and it would never happen again. And it did, a, a yeah, lot more times. A lot more and a lot of ambulance rides and a lot of doctor's appointments and a lot of fear and worry and, and just unknown. We finally had genetic testing done, which they had you know, been concerned of it possibly being Dravet syndrome. So we got the results back and our first results came back negative. And the doctor said, you know, I only checked for mutations there's a there's a slight chance for some kids that they could have a deletion so we'll run it one more time but you're pretty much in the clear and sure enough didn't that test come back with a with a deletion life has not been the same since you know we had already been through so much and we had watched him go through so much and to know that this wasn't something that was gonna go away it's just overwhelming Trevet syndrome is a rare form of epilepsy that includes a constellation of symptoms that include difficult to treat seizures, as well as developmental delays and other significant impacts on patients' health. Patients with Dravet syndrome, while they're diagnosed very early in life, usually in the first year, they do grow up to be adults that still have significant medical concerns. Most adults will never live independent lives and will always need a caretaker. There's no pause with Dravet. It's, it's always um, a factor from the moment you wake up and you wanna say to the moment you go to bed, but it's even through the night. You have this constant fear all the time. You're just, you know, waiting for the next seizure. And, you know, when there's not a seizure, there's behavior issues and there's doctor's appointments and there's um, school meetings and balancing therapists medication. and balancing medication. Yeah, diet. and keto diet and, you know, all the while trying to do all the other normal things. You know, we have other children that are playing sports and want to be with friends and living a normal life and just so many choices to make too. You know, you know, your daughter's going to do some wonderful thing and only one of us can go see her because somebody's got to stay home with Will. Um, you know, or just, just the fear of something happening when bringing him yeah, somewhere. Yeah, you know, if, if you do bring him, you, you're at the soccer sideline and you're not watching your daughter playing soccer, you're watching your son so that he doesn't have a seizure on the sideline. You know, yeah. You're just never really in, you're never really enjoying your moments because you're always in fear of, of what else might happen. And it's not fair to his sisters either. I mean, they, they love him so much, but you know, when your daughter is calling you from another room in the house screaming because your son's having a seizure. Like that's not fair to her to have to, to witness that and, and see the pain that he goes through on a day-to-day -day basis. Like it's not fair. Um, you know, when they hear ambulance says go by, their initial reaction is to check in and see if Will's okay. Like that's not, that's not what a kid should have to have going through their head. As hard as it is for us as a whole family, it's hardest for him. And, um, you know, yeah, I'd take it all on for him if I could. It's just so painful to watch on a day to day basis. He just wants to be a, a kid. He wants to Being play tag boy. at recess and he, want, he loves shooting basketball, but it's just not something that he can do safely. 
stars pieces, seeing him want to go and do and be a boy and have to take that away because he doesn't understand the other t we started a new medicine recently and when I gave it to him he was asking what it was and I said you know it's a new medicine to hopefully help with your seizures and you know hopefully it'll work and you'll be able to do more and he said mom I'm gonna run so fast I'm gonna be able to run so fast and it just breaks my heart because that's all he wants to do. He wants to be a kid. I guess regardless of how we found Dravet Syndrome Foundation, I'm just glad we did because, you know, the Dravet Syndrome community gets it. And, you know, having that foundation means people who understand it, it means resources. And with all of the research that's happening, it means hope. You know, mm. so it's given us hope. The Dravet Syndrome Foundation, or DSF as we call it, was founded in 2009 with the goal of accelerating research while providing support, education, and resources for our patient families. DSF is proud to be the largest non-governmental funder of Dravet-specific research. By organizing and educating our community, we've been able to move the needle forward in the field of Dravet Syndrome, including many new clinical trials and better treatments. The vigilance required when you have a child with Dravet is constant always on edge. On a daily basis, Noah has a lot of seizures. You know, it affects everything in his life. Medications, um, his development, how he goes to school is different, how we have to care for him. Someone has to have their eyes and hands on him at all times. It's just everything, all day, all night too. Isaiah has no clue that anything is different about him than any of his peers. He is a very, very active child. He has sensory processing disorder and is quite the seeker. So probably our biggest issue is just trying to keep him safe as far as his um, sensory seeking. The hardest part of the journey, I think we can both agree, is just living in, in fear. And it's not only just the fear of his safety on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's the fear that we're not doing enough as parents and as caregivers. When people think of a special needs child, they don't realize they're really, they're human too. They have a personality and things make them happy and upset and they go through all of the same feelings. I just want him to have like the best possible life he can have. Every night I, I just pray that he grows to be a happy old man. I think I, I just want him to have a future. You know, there's always that fear that he doesn't. Um, we put him to bed every night and I kiss him goodnight and you don't know if you're gonna, you don't know if he's gonna be there in the morning. You know, Sudep is a real, a real fear. And no one should have to have that when they put their kid to bed at night. You know, sometimes he asks me for one more story and I'm tired, it's been a long day, but I can't say no because I don't, I don't know if that's the last time I'm gonna read my story. For us, DSF means so much. I mean, it means hope, it means community, it means research and a potential cure and being connected with other families that have gone through that initial shock and then learning that there is a community of people that have the same situation, you know, that was a big deal for us. And we continue to be uh, blown away by how much support uh, is possible through the work of DSF. The Dervais Foundation has been really involved in a lot of research and clinical trials and Noah was put on Fintepla and Compassionate Use and it completely changed his path forward. We really credit the Gervais Foundation's um, involvement with these clinical trials and support of them um, for, I mean, really Noah's life because I really believe Fintepla has saved his life. Our patients and families matter and deserve a better quality of life. Our supporters are really the driving force behind all that we do, and we appreciate you coming out tonight and helping our patient community find answers. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Um.
Thank you everyone for coming to our Gervais Syndrome Gala tonight. We really appreciate your support. <laughs> I'll say thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for, for coming. coming. We just want to say thank you for supporting um, our family and the DeRay family and the DeRay Foundation. Thank, thank you. you.